Hello and welcome to the podcast version of Convergence 2012, written by Robert R. Ricks and read by the author. The story contains mature content and harsh language. There may be some content which may offend some listeners. If you're easily offended, please stop listening now. Make sure you check out the website at www.convergence2012.com and facebook.com slash convergence2012. Thank you for checking us out, and I hope you enjoy the story. Here we go. Chapter 1. Arrival of a Watcher The air was stale and thin, missing the freshness and vitality that Zanari was used to. It was hard breathing a foreign air, and a stagnant taste nearly made her vomit. She wondered how the humans could possibly stand such living condition. In her mind, it wasn't living at all. She shook the thought away as she reminded herself of why she was there. She was in a small structure, obviously a home. She felt constrained and the walls were far too close for her liking. She scanned the room and noticed that it was a bedroom of a small child who was sleeping just a few feet away from her. The child's breathing was loud and seemed labored to her, much too labored for one so small. Must be this air, she thought, again gagging. She examined a small child and she smiled as she noticed his vibrant aura. It was a pale blue with strong swaths of pink and yellow flowing around his entire little form. She needed to understand her environment better, and since the child was sleeping, she decided it wouldn't harm her mission to adapt via his memories. She stood over him and positioned her long, slender fingers just barely above his flesh. The warmth of his skin was surprising to her. Even though she was at least half an inch away, she could feel the waves of heat radiating from his head. Emotions and memories flooded into her mind. A jumble of wild fragments presented themselves to her, and she had to work hard to rejoin them into cohesive timelines. The child was named Jeff Hill, and he was eight years old. He had lived in the house with his mother Diane his whole life, which made some things easy for Zanari. When she had enough information, she slowly moved back away from Jeff. She looked around again, and everything was familiar to her as she had lived there her entire life. Glancing down, she realized she would have to find some clothing and clean up. The shift had left her covered in an off-white glazed material that was beginning to dry in powder. She silently slid into the bathroom closest to her. The child was being raised by his mother alone, and only she, the child, and a family pet, the cat named Sheba, lived in the house. There was no threat near, so Zanari relaxed a bit as she examined herself in the bathroom. She was slim, as many of her kind, and had deep brooding eyes that rarely blinked. The eyes were the deepest blue that shifted as if the ocean roared within them. Her skin was smooth and soft as silk, pale in color, a milky complexion which shimmered slightly. She had long flowing crimson hair that moved almost as if it had a life of its own and hung down to the floor. Her build was closer to that of a teenager than that of a full-grown woman, small breasts with very athletic muscular build. When she moved, it was with purpose and grace. Sheba the cat watched her from the window of the rear of the bathroom. The cat bowed his head as if to pay its respect to the visiting woman. Zanari examined herself in a mirror, and her gaze stopped at her necklace, which adorned her long, thin neck. The necklace, known as the Gaklukun, had ten solid gold thin slabs, each measuring around six inches long and a quarter inch wide. Off to either side of the gold were eleven smaller silver slabs, roughly half the size of her gold brothers. Each slab had engravings on it, which glowed softly. They were bound together by a black thread, which seemed too fragile and delicate to hold the weight of the necklace. The black material was amazingly flexible and strong at the same time. She gazed at the dust on her flesh and reached up to the center of her necklace and gently rubbed the third golden stone there, and in barely audible phrases spoke. The necklace shimmered brightly for a moment and the dust exploded off of her form and simply disappeared. The air was suddenly filled with a floral scent a hundred times sweeter than anything on earth. Sheba sniffed the air and began to purr in satisfaction. In a short while, this is what you'll smell all the time, my dear friend. Sheba nodded and settled down to sleep, still purring. It was at that moment that Zanari heard the mother Diane stir from her bed and slowly walk to the bathroom. Diane stood for a moment in front of her bathroom and regarded the door. Her son never closed the bathroom door, which drove her nuts. She had scolded him many times as she walked in on him doing his business. She peered into the dark bedroom and could see a still form sleeping. Then a smell came from the bathroom, gentle at first, but it grew stronger as each second passed. A smell she had never smelled before. It was so pure, so beautiful. She had to take a step back. What was that smell? Her heart pounded in her chest. 
Someone was in her bathroom, and regardless of how wonderful he or she smelled, they were still in her bathroom. She slowly reached for the door handle. Her hand was trembling. She paused a few inches away and considered the door again. Damn it! Diane, get it together and open the damn door, she thought to herself. She forced herself to turn the handle and flung the door open. It creaked and squealed sharply. She walked in and turned on the light. The smell was heavenly. What could have made such a wonderful smell? She wondered. She slowly opened the shower and no one was there. Jeff must have closed the door when he was done, she whispered to herself. Satisfied she was alone, she quickly sat down on the toilet and urinated. She sat for a while enjoying the foreign smell. Finally she said to herself, What is that smell? The cat meowed and Diane gasped sharply. Sheba! And she chuckled to herself. Do you know where the smell good came from? She said in a girly voice. Sheba looked towards the shower and Diane glanced over. For a brief moment she thought she saw some brief shimmer. She shrugged. Sheba could see Zanari, but Diane could not. Zanari thought about speaking with Diane, but after seeing how badly damaged her aura was, decided against it. Instead, she stood and waited. Diane finished up and headed back to her bedroom. Flipping the switch on her way out, she said, Well, if you find out, let me know, okay? Gonna go back to bed. Got a long day tomorrow. A moment later, she was gone. Zanari waited until Diane laid down, and gently she placed her into a deep sleep. Within three seconds, Diane was snoring gently. Zanari glanced at Sheba and nodded. She will wake in a few hours. Yes, I know the air purge was not needed to cleanse myself, but the smell was too much for me. I just need a little more time to get used to this foul air is all. Sonari knew most people would not be able to see her, but she didn't want the few that could to draw attention to her, because once she was pointed out, then the others would see her as well. So she decided to try to blend in as much as possible. She again reached up to the necklace, and with her right hand she gently caressed the last stone on it and began whispering. With her left hand, she motioned, and the magazine floated gently up to eye level. She motioned with her slender fingers, and the pages began to slowly turn. She regarded the images on the pages, and she shook her head. Why cover their natural beauty with these material masks? She wondered. After the magazine had reached its end, she completed her ritual, and the air shimmered around her. Her long, flowing red hair began to snake itself into long braids that formed beautiful Celtic patterns that hung down her back. Clothing hung on her, and her skin shifted a multitude of colors until she settled on a well-tanned complexion. Her body form shifted slightly, and her chest expanded outward. Her eyes also shifted colors and finally ended on a soft brown shade. Her hair also shifted until it, too, was a dark brown. She turned again and regarded Sheba. What do you think? Will I pass casual scrutiny? Sheba stretched and hopped down and did three circles around Zanari's feet. Ah, yes, the shoes. I forgot the humans need them, yes? More whispering and shoes materialized around her feet as she rose each foot. Sheba meowed and Zanari smiled. Thank you for your help. I won't forget it. Yes, you were on a list as well as the child. Sheba paused and regarded Zanari. The mother? I'm sorry. I don't think she'll make it past the test. I will make a note and follow up on her specifically, though, as a favor for your help. Will that please you? Sheba meowed. When? December 12, 2012, on Earth's calendar. One year from today, it begins. We'll have nine days once it starts. Sheba purred again. Until we meet again, says Inari, as she passed through the wall like a ghost to the sleeping world.